Denis Shapovalov is hoping to learn from playing his idol Roger Federer after exiting the Miami Open. Denis Shapovalov at Sports Center, Twitter. Denis Shapovalov is hoping to learn from the enjoyable experience of playing Roger Federer after exiting the Miami Open. It was a special moment for the Canadian last night after playing his idol Roger Federer in the semifinals of the Miami Open last night. The moment is something Shapovalov will never forget, but the result is something he will want to forget in a hurry after losing 6 2, 6, or in convincing fashion. After a poor first set, the Canadian played better in the second set before Federer survived the storm to reach the final in Miami once again. After the match Shapovalov described the experience as enjoyable and is looking to learn from the occasion, yeah, definitely, it's always tough to lose, but, yeah, it's definitely enjoyable to be out there with your idol on the court. Shapovalov said in his press conference, I was just trying to play as good as I can, and, you know, he did a good job today. He played an excellent match, I wasn't able to kind of stay at his level. So, you know, I'm just going to try to learn from this and move forward. Despite the result last night, reaching his first Masters 1000 semi-final is something to be proud of and after an inconsistent 18 months, the Canadian finally put his game together this week. The 19-year-old also acknowledged that he wasn't playing at his 100% best but credited the 20-time Grand Slam champion for causing that. Honestly I don't think I was able to play at 100% at my level today, but, you know, that's why he's so good. Shapovalov explained. You know, he didn't let me kind of get into my groove and get into my game. That's just, you know, it shows how experienced and how good he is. Next up for Shapovalov is the clay court season, which is something that could favor the Canadian as he suggested in his press conference. Honestly, yeah, it's kind of a good part of the season for me. I think I have proven myself on the dirt. I see that I can play on it and beat good players on it. The first tournament of Shapovalov's clay court season is the Monte Carlo Rolex Masters, which starts on the 15th of April. Two of the WTA's most well-liked players and reserved characters will fight it out for the biggest title of their careers. Karolina Pliskova, at Kaplishkova, Twitter, by Matthew Merolf in 2016, Karolina Pliskova advanced to the U.S. Open final. One summer later, after consistent results over the next year, she briefly held the number one ranking. Since that time, she's failed to take her career to the next level, or reach another major final. But now with Renee Stubbs and Conchita Martinez in her corner, her play has steadily improved over the past six months. With a win today, she would move back up to number two in the world. Ashley Barty, at BT Sport, Twitter. In 2014, Ash Barty decided to walk away from the tennis world at the age of 18 despite already achieving success as a doubles player. She spent the next year as a professional cricket player in her native Australia. Barty returned to tennis in 2016, but immediate results did not come as she battled injury. But by 2017, she found herself ranked inside the top 20 in singles. Then earlier this year, she reached her first major quarterfinal. Now she'll debut in the top 10 with her run to the final in Miami. Karolina Pliskova, 5 vs. Ash Barty, 12. They've split four previous meetings, two of which were on hard courts. 18 months ago in Wuhan, Barty prevailed 7-6 in the third. In last year's U.S. Open round of 16, Pliskova won in straight sets. Karolina will look to control the rallies with her power, while Barty will look to use her variety to give Pliskova different looks and move her around the court. Considering neither of them exactly crave the spotlight, X's and O's may not be as important as who better handles the moment. In a match of this magnitude, where their previous matches have been tight, experience on a big stage such as this will be crucial. That a definitive edge for Pliskova, who played in the U.S. Open final in this same country a few years ago. I look her the life the winner's trophy on Saturday.
Other notable matches on Day 13, Bob and Mike Bryan, at Usta, Twitter, defending champions Bob Bryan and Mike Bryan, 3, going for their 118th career title as a team, versus Wesley Kuhlhoff and Stefano Tsitsipas. John Isner is aiming for a second consecutive Miami Open after beating Felix Agarali Asim. John Isner, at ADP underscore tour, Twitter, John Isner continues his winning streak in tiebreaks after beating Felix Agarali Asim 7, 6, 3, 7, 6, 4, to reach back-to-back -back finals in Miami. The defending champion is 9-0 in tiebreaks this week after beating 18-year-old qualifier Felix Agarali Asim to reach a second consecutive final in Miami. In a topsy-turvy match, Zagarali Asim served for both sets but his inexperience proved costly as Isner battled back to seal the win. As a result, Isner will look to successfully defend his title on Sunday when he faces either Roger Federer or Denis Shapovalov. It was uncharted territory for the talented Canadian as he was competing in his first-ever Masters 1000 semifinal. However, that didn't seem to phase him early on as he produced some comfortable holds of serve early on. Not only was the 18-year-old serving well, he was constructing some good shots on return as he looked to take his opportunities on the Isner serve when they arrive. After saving three breakpoints with three aces in the fifth game, Isner was unable to hold for much longer as he was remarkably broken to love. Advantage to the Canadian However in tennis you can't buy experience and that was costing Agarali a seam in the latter stages of the first set as three double faults meant that he was broken back. Unlike Agarali a seam, the American had plenty of experience and knew that he couldn't waste his opportunity. After forcing a tiebreak, Isner played some hammering forehands and great volleys to take the tiebreak 7-3. It was a hash lesson for Felix but one he needed to learn from quickly if he wanted to reach the final in Miami. Both men were working hard at the start of the second set to try and protect their serve as the start seemed crucial. One trait for Agarali seems that we've been used to seeing in the past few weeks is his ability to never give up and that was evident when he once again broke for a 4-2 lead. But it was another moment of hesitation and nerves for the youngster as he once again failed to close out the set to hand Isner the break back. It was a great tournament for Felix but he was simply outdone by nerves and inexperience as Isner took another tiebreak to seal his place in the Miami final for a second year in a row. Despite the result Agarali Asim will climb to 33 in the world and can look forward to making more statements on his preferred surface, clay. On the other hand, Isner will now aim to successfully defend his Miami title when he faces Roger Federer or Denis Shapovalov on Sunday. Daria Gavrilova has appointed a new coach and David Taylor as she looks to turn her form around. Daria Gavrilova, at Tennis Australia, Twitter, Daria Gavrilova has appointed compatriot David Taylor as her new coach until July after a slow start to the 2019 season, having only won two of her ten matches so far this season, Gavrilova has decided to bring an experienced Aussie David Taylor to her team. Taylor has worked with former number ones such as Martina Hingis and Anna Ivanovic before as he looks to turn Gavrilova's year around. Speaking about the potential partnership, Taylor has said that Gavrilova has some goals in mind. When we decided to start, she's been very good in communication already. Taylor told Australian reporters. She set out goals, she wants to get a lot more defined in her playing style, looking for forehands, using her movement in an offensive way, not just a defensive way. Having clear patterns of play to build her game around, I like that, the fact she's looking to be a lot more structured. The partnership will begin in Rabat, Morocco in late April and will last until after Wimbledon, where they will review the success of their partnership. In addition to Hingis and Ivanovic, the Australian has also recently worked with Madison Keys, Yelena Ostapenko and Elise Mertens, who won her first premier event under Taylor in Doha. The former Fed Cup captain hopes that previous experience with Gavrilova will help their relationship. I think being Australian, and for so long being the Fed Cup captain and just involved in Australian tennis. Taylor explained.
Even though I've coached outside of Australia for so long, I've just taken a real notice and interest in Gavrilova. I think it's gonna be a very easy start, just because I know her so well. The only two wins of Gavrilova's season came in Indian Wells where she beat Diana Yastremska and Mihaila Buzarnescu. Now the world number 54 is preparing for Australia's Fed Cup semi-final against Belarus in Brisbane, which is on the weekend of the 20th-21 stone of April.